Welcome back to the channel and my first hike of the day. It's a short one today. Um, in the, I'm in the northern fells. We'll go into that in a bit. I just want to say before we start, and I've learned this, and it's up to you whether you adopt this mantra or not. I'm not teaching you anything. Well, I might be teaching you something, but it's up to you whether you take on board what I'm saying. For me, the most important part of photography is learning the skill to come away with something which pleases you in terms of images of what's presented in front of you. And also using the tools that you have. And what I mean by that is obviously gear. I've really stripped back recently with the, it's got the Canon R6 and the 35mm prime lens. And also recently purchased the 100 to 400. The 35mm not too wide, not too short. And also being a fast lens, maximum aperture 1.8 should really open up some opportunities as well in terms of that artistic uh, touch to things, you know, shallow depth of the field, etc. The 100 to 400, as I said in my last video, I got that purely for the fells, uh, just to open up more opportunities. Uh, and I've certainly done that today. So yeah, the most important part for me, and it's up to you whether you consider this true or not, is the skill and the enjoyment to come away with something what's presented to you. I'm not a planner, I'm not a great planner. All I do is I know what time I'm getting up and I know where I'm going. And that's about it. Well, the late district, you presented with a, a plethora of different conditions. So there you go. Anyway, here's today's hike. Hope you enjoy it. I'm armed with the uh, 35 mil today, but I've also got the 100 to 400 in the bag as well. It's a, a, a little bit better weather-wise in comparison to the last time you saw me here in the Lake District, where, as I said on the video, it's more a question of survival. Some nice mood brewing up. Um, yeah, lots of mood, lots of rain in the clouds, but as I say, it's... Uh, holding back. Right, let's take a snap of this. My first fell of the day, I say first fell, so we'll get on, but the the first fell I'm doing today, it's, it, it stands on its own, that's called Southern Fell, which is in the northern area of the Lake District, uh, as I continue my second round of the Wainwrights. Right, let's see what we can grab from this. I got a comment not too long ago that since I bought the GR for my urban photography my style has changed I thought hard about that so I'm thinking what exactly has changed is it my awareness of shapes and how different shapes interact with each other in the frame is it my choice of subjects for instance I don't know and I think as photographers it's something which naturally progresses as we gain experience I mean I'm what, I'm about what, half an hour into walk, and I'm still seeing different shapes, verticals and diagonals, which is nothing new, but simple scene, look. Even that, that curve, with the verticals from the trees, and it's things like that which stop and just makes me think, like, yeah, okay. So I just snap away. To many photographer, however, no doubt, they'll just walk past it and just shrug it off. But for me, I think it's important to grab something, get it in the bag. There must be something there, I've said this before, there must be something there which has stopped you in your tracks. I mean, you've got, you've got one branch there which is veering off to the left hand side. That's creating a little bit of a contrast, contrast between the angles of this, I don't know. Without further ado, I'm going to swap over to the 100 to 400. Yeah, I'm not used to this, changing lenses in the field, not used to this at all. There we go, there we go. 
I looked at that scene, 35 millimeters, just too wide. So, right, now I've got to think about where I'm going to put it. Predicaments to have a landscape photographer. Right, let's see what Paul can get with us. Okay, so what's attracted me here? Uh, the tops of Clough Head and the Dodds. Probably more the Dodd just covered in uh, some snow. I won't say a full blanket, it's a little bit of snow. So I've zoomed in, as I said zoomed in, well, halfway to it, it's 200 millimetres. Now, to add it, to add context to this shot and add a little bit of interest as well, there's a, a copse of trees and a pan of larch trees, probably larch trees, I don't know. Uh, and there's one slightly standing out, so I've included those in the frame, not on the third of the frame, because it's not all about positioning your subjects on the third of the frame, roll the thirds, yeah. Uh, it's not all about that at all, so I'll, I'll position it at the bottom right hand side, I just think it balances itself quite well. Now I'm conscious as well of not underexposing my images because I came back from last uh, last visit, first outing with the 100 to 400 at Latrig. Uh, as I said, as I said in the video, nearly all the images were underexposed. Probably two reasons for that. One because of the conditions, um, howling winds and rain and the concentration what wasn't at its peak and also I was conscious about camera shake. I shouldn't be conscious about camera shake. I'm shooting this at, well I could probably get down to a 50th of a second but I'm shooting at FA 100 and ISO 400. Better to increase your ISO than to come away with underexposed images because let's face it cameras these days mirrorless cameras um, can put up with a high ISOs without introducing too much noise which impacts the image so always get the exposure right so that's what I'm doing framing up nice curves putting the tree in the bottom right hand side looking at the Instagram as well just conscious of that and boom there you go okay so we do have a weather front coming in you can feel the spits and spats of rain so without further ado let's get the uh, protective gear on I'm sure there's an easy way to do this but never mind Get over. Yeah. <laughs> there will be an easy way. I.e. take the lens hood off and then do that. But there you go. Covered. Like Turn it up. When I'm ready, just click it in to the backpack. Weather fronts bring what? good photographer. They also can bring crap photography where you just can't see it. Let's just see what happens. It's holding off. Holding off. There's rain on my glasses which is always a good sign. Well it's not a good sign if you want to see. It's a good indication that there's rain on its way. It hasn't hit us. Um, lovely bit with No light. Do you know what I keep saying? No, like, you probably find other video content makers say there's no light. Two reasons. First reason, it gives me that comfort zone, you know, relaxes me, lowers my expectations of grabbing a, a decent shot. Because, of course, you need light. Without light, there's nothing, which is absolute rubbish. But secondly, another reason is, uh, well, there's no light. No direct light, it's evenly spaced. Right, we're near, we're near, I say near, we're at a high, higher point of the fell, so the fell. And from here, spin you around, from there it's heading up there. 
to the uh, trig point. I'm hoping once I get to the top of here that other views are going to open up, i.e. Blencathra. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, let's just see. Not Blencathra. Blencathra's over there. Bannerdale crags, bow scale. As you can see, low lying cloud, there's no prominent peaks. Get that nice contrast that I want. Right, up here is where I'm headed. Now there's 214 Wainwrights in the Lake District. And a lot of the summits have some really interesting um, crags, brilliant views, uh, really good for the photographic brain. So the fell is not one of them. Simple pile of rocks. Now the views, I mean, they're not, you can't grumble really. You can't grumble. It's all about curves. And you can't beat good curves. I've watched that. I've said it. Yeah, the, the options are that, um, curved lines and it's just building layers as well with the telephoto lens. The weather seems to have passed us. However, there is still a front just hovering over Great Mel Fell. The Dodds have appeared i think it's dodd maybe clough head that um the, the, yeah anyway it's really it's, it has appeared got some a bit of light on it we'll say a bit of light and it's clear so again i've homed on that and that is the main focal point in this um walk today but uh yeah don't think i'll hang around try to compose with those stones Time to contemplate. Sit down. And just think what lies ahead for 2024. Any ideas? I have no ideas. But big changes. Big changes this year for me, personally, uh, job-wise. So yeah, lots to think about, and I can't think of a better place than the Lake District. This is where my heart is, as it were. It's a coin of phrase. Plus, just to escape, think, press reset. Just watching what nature has on offer. That weather front on it, me, that's for sure. But, nice veil of fog just building up. Enough of that. Let's get moving. It's definitely misted up and it's not evaporating as well as I descend, which is a good thing, of course. I'm going to stick to my 100 to 400. See what it brings me, see what there is. Um, which I probably missed on my mist, which I probably didn't see on my way up. It's not over yet. So yeah, the mist didn't hang around. It went. By the time I descended to where I am now, it's gone. Not to worry. But what I did do is spend a good 10-15 minutes, not that far away from where I am now, using the 100 to 400, picking out little details. Some abstract, some not, but it really is good fun. And going back to what I said at the start of the video, come away with something, no matter what is presented in front of you, and no matter what the tools you have to hand. No need to get the full range of lenses anyway enjoy your photography and here is the gallery from today's shoot 
Take good care of yourself. Keep smiling. Bye-bye for now.